Brent Brookhouse. I am here with substitute host Ricky Shane Page. Ethan Page is out of town, so we just replaced him with a different champion, same last name. How's it going, man? It's going. I gotta <laughs> pick up the slack for Ethan Page. Yeah. It's all right. I can do it. I can handle it. Yeah, he's got, uh, I think between the, the new baby, going to the UK, the trip to Japan and everything, it was just a rough week to line up, but uh, definitely a good replacement. Yeah, well, thanks, man. I hope so. I hope I can live up to him. He's a uh, he likes to talk. He likes to hear himself talk. So we'll yeah, see. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so yeah, man. What like uh, this is gonna be different because we haven't ever done this before, and we didn't really have a lot of planning. So um, <laughs> it's all right. So let's go with the uh, let's go with this. Y- your uh, your career has really kind of taken uh, taken off. You know, gotten to some new levels and the past i don't know six months or so like how are you feeling about how things are going for you good man like really good actually like uh it just kind of started happening naturally i think uh a lot a lot of to do with all the death matches i've been doing uh recently but uh that that always gets attention when you're covered in blood and stuff on the on instagram but uh i think a lot of it has to do with me going over to the uk too i've been you know getting a pretty good fan base over there just uh just just being friends with mark andrews and pete dunn doesn't hurt either because they're both you know superstars at this point but uh yeah it's just kind of crazy like it just happened all of a sudden so it's cool though i mean i've been wrestling for like ever so it's nice that it's happening now <laughs> right and i mean on the on the death match front i i guess that's a place to start um the i mean we can go with uh you tweeted earlier today um when you tell deathmatch wrestlers they're great wrestlers and say you don't know you know you don't have to do that stuff right we know we don't we like it also i absolutely 100 percent for sure know i have read on me thanks um so so i mean i guess that's that is a thing um okay like straight up if i'm cooking dinner and i like cut my finger i feel like i might die i might pass out yeah but I guess let's start there. Like, is it, I don't know how it, you say you like it. Um, I guess what, what is it about deathmatch wrestling that is appealing to you personally? Um, I don't know. I think, well, when I was a kid, although I'll, I'll tell, I'll tell you a story. So the reason I became a wrestler, uh, my friend of mine talked his sister into, uh, getting the 1998 King of the Ring pay-per-view. So we watched it, and that was the hell in the cell between uh, Mankind and The Undertaker. And when Undertaker threw Foley off of the cage, while he was in midair, I, the, the thought popped in my head, like, I'm going to be a wrestler. And like, so I think it started there for me. Like, I always really liked ECW uh i always liked that uh you know the the hardcore stuff and then when i was younger when i was like 16 i found czw and like started watching that and watching death matches and then got into fmw and like those they, like the tapes they used to have a like suncoast video of like hayabusa doing these like crazy barbed wire matches and stuff so there was just always something that attracted me to it um i don't know and, and like people ask me all the time like does it hurt i was like yeah it hurts but it's like it's no worse than than doing a regular match. To be honest, I've been hurt way worse doing regular matches. Like the only really bad injury I've ever gotten from doing death matches is uh, when I cut my face open uh, when I won TOD uh, two years ago. But like I don't know, I just don't think about it. Like I just I just do it. It just happens, and then and then it's over, and I'm like, oh, I'm all cut up, but I'm okay. Like I don't. It's weird. <laughs> Right. So, I mean, I guess it's just the, the superficial cuts and everything versus the getting dropped on your head in a quote-unquote regular match. Yeah, yeah exa- exactly. And, like, I remember when I saw Masato Tanaka when I was younger, I was like, this is the coolest-looking dude I've ever seen in my life. Like, I want scars all over me. Like, which is a dumb thing to think, but, like, I don't know, now i got a bunch of scars, and I'm like, okay, I look cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was something to, uh, I don't know, all the the scarred up foreheads and stuff where it's like, I don't know why it's super gross, but it's kind of cool. I, I could do that, but yeah, no, I can't. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm from 
Michigan, uh, you know, like when I was a teenager, like the the local fed for me was IWA Mid South. So okay, so like you know, it was maybe an hour fifteen to get to uh, most of their shows when they were running Indiana. Yeah. Uh, so you know, we would go to shows and you know may or may not stick around for the deathmatch stuff but uh it kind of depended who was doing stuff like corporal robinson was cool uh yeah (laughs) but then there were some guys that it was just like no thanks but that that seems to be i mean i and i will admit to like deathmatch stuff is not my area of expertise by any means so like i guess what do you think is the point or the thing that caused it to cross over from where you can kind of you can kind of do both now a little easier than before before it was straight up you're a deathmatch wrestler that's what you are was it like when the necro butcher and joe stuff or i guess where it was it really i think i honestly think it's just when the deathmatch guys started getting better like, no offense to some of the old school guys, but a lot of them were just, you know, fat white dudes walking and not doing anything, just bleeding. And But, like, or I feel maybe Joe and, and, and Necro and just, like, guys like Masada and Nick Gage and, and Drake Younger, guys that, like, knew how to wrestle that could have really good matches were having death matches and then having really good death matches. So, like, I think it's just when the guys that could actually work – started doing them is like when it became a little bit more acceptable and it wasn't just like hack and slash like let's see who can bleed the most and like get hit the hardest it's like no let's see who can have like the best match right because for i mean there was such a huge uh like in the like early 2000s or or so it was literally like do you want to stick around or do you want to take off because these two dudes are just gonna hit each other with light tubes for 10 minutes and literally do nothing else yeah exactly like it just i feel like the matches just got better and like the guys just got better and and like nowadays like i feel like uh, people like back then i feel like anybody who wanted to get hit with a light tube they would just let them on a show but like now it's like no man like you got to be like a good wrestler and like you you can't just be anybody off the street that's willing to, to bleed there's enough wrestlers now that that are willing to do death matches that are actually like really, really good uh, that will do it. So like, you don't need to watch that of just two guys hitting each other with stuff for 10 minutes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's almost kind of flipped to where before it was like a special thing to see a death match guy have uh, a regular match. And now, now it's like every now and then you get somebody who you don't associate with death matches at all, throwing themselves into one and, it's kind of become more acceptable, I guess. Yeah, I think that goes too with the guys. The guys just being better, and the well, because... the regular non deathmatch guys trusting these other deathmatch guys that are actually good wrestlers to able to keep them safe in that environment. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think a lot yeah. of it comes down to okay, I trust you to not you know ruin my career or put me on the shelf for six months where I'm not making any money. And exactly. Um. So. 2016 Tournament of Death, you won, right? Yes. 2017 King of Death Matches. Yes. CZW title. Yep. What, uh, th- those are a lot of things that seems like would have been goals that are ticked off. Like, what, uh, what's your next thing that you, like, oh, uh, man, really want? Uh, I would like to uh, go to PWG. I know that seems out of left field, but, uh, I've been in, like, every major tournament in the country except for bola uh the super eight and i think that's it like i've done like all the deathmatch tournaments pretty much all the major ones like i've been i was in uh tpi i was in the jlit i was in the young lions cup uh i did tod king of the death carnage cup like i've been in like all these tournaments like so i'd, I'd like to do bola honestly that's like pretty pretty up there for me right on and i guess uh i guess i I just totally lost one of the questions (laughs) that i had pulled up i clicked the wrong thing here um 
Yeah, let let's hit some of the reader quest or listener questions. God, okay. Read a podcast. What the hell? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, at Top Rope Tony, it's Tony Quant. He sends in a lot of questions to the show. Um, he okay. asked if you have any pre-match r- rituals. Uh, I, every wrestler ever tries to take a dump before they wrestle. That's just that's just real talk right there. That just seems like good business. <laughs> yeah, you just have to. Other than that, no, not really. I stretch a little bit. Uh, I just, I don't know. I've just wrestled. I mean, I've been wrestling so long. I just, uh, I just do it, you know? So not really. I'm kind of boring when it comes to that. <laughs> Other than taking a poop, which everybody does. Is there any, like, is there anything that happens, like, I don't know, match type or anything that, still draws up a lot of nerves or are you a nervous guy kind of by um i not match types i get nervous when i'm wrestling someone that i know is way better than me and i don't want to look like i can't keep up with them uh i had that feeling recently with ar fox because he's really really good and i just want to make sure that i look at least halfway decent against him um, that happened to me when I wrestled Josh Alexander for Alpha One recently. He's like probably one of the best wrestlers in the world, and I just wanted to be able to keep up with him. So it's more about uh, being nervous that I don't look like I suck. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, uh, let's see. Tony asked, where did We Can Roll originate from? Uh, the theme song that I come out to is called We Can Roll by the Bad Rabbits. Um it's like a really awesome song. Like I, literally every show I go to, like people ask me what the song is. Um, I remember when I was thinking about changing my music, this was probably five years ago. I just really liked this song. And every time it came up on my Spotify, I would just listen to it over and over again. And then I was just like, man, I wonder if I could come out to this. It's kind of like a weird song. And I was like, ah, screw it. I'm just going to do it. And uh, it just kind of took off. And then everybody loves that song. All right. Uh, the last question Tony had sent in was, uh, "What you make of the uh, Ethan Page and T.J. Marconi beef?" Huh. Um, I was letting it go. I know T.J. Marconi. I've wrestled T.J. Marconi. Uh, I, I I was just like I tried to keep my nose out of that stuff. Um, Ethan Page is like a real life friend to me. Like we talk all the time. Like we're like real life friends. And, uh, once he said something about his wife, that's when I got upset. And I was just like, all right, dude, like you don't need to say anything about someone's wife. Like, so I tweeted at him. I was just like, Hey man, like don't talk about people's wives. Like you were being unsafe. What you did was uncalled for. And like, just, just admit it and move on. And, um, he DM to me actually. Because like I said, I know him. He was like, I didn't do anything wrong. Like, these kids were fine. And I was just like, yo, you got lucky. Like, you, like, that last move. Because he, I know he does a power bomb. Because I've wrestled him before. That was like his finisher, I think. Because he loves Diesel. Uh, and he used, he used to do power bomb. I could tell that he tried to power bomb that dude. And messed, and tried to throw him down so hard that he threw him down and he flipped. And then he tried to say he did a dominator. It's like, no, you weren't trying to do a dominator. Like, all these wrestlers, like, guys that know what they're doing are watching this clip and going, like, what the hell is this dude's problem? Listen, I'm all for roughing up somebody who maybe deserves it or needs to learn a lesson or whatever. I don't know the situation with those kids. But there's a difference between being a little snug with someone and then legitimately trying to hurt them. Uh, I mean, personally, I'd rather see you punch somebody in the face exactly then risk like the snap and force on the power bomb slash dominator was scary uh yeah like it it was and i mean i'm looking at this as somebody who you know i i'm not a wrestler but when i you can see you're so used to seeing things happen in wrestling that you can see when something is out of the ordinary and there's just such force put on it that it's he he threw him down so hard that he almost fell. Right. Like, he was trying to, like, hurt this person. And he's lucky his head didn't hit the mat and break his neck. And, like, 
I'll, I'll even go a little bit further because I, I gave him the benefit of the doubt. And I was like, all right, man, maybe you were trying to do a dominator. I still said, I said, whatever you were trying to do, it was still unsafe. Like, I'm like this. I, I literally said, I was like, this isn't the eighties, man. Like you can't get away with shit like that anymore. Like it's just uncalled for. It's not, it's not, there's no room for it in our business anymore. You know, it's, it's not the eighties when we were trying to convince everybody that, the wrestling's real and everybody you know if you say something i'm gonna slap you like it ain't like that anymore we have the internet everybody knows uh you know robert downey jr isn't walking around on the streets going no dude i'm iron man like fuck you if you think i'm not iron man i'm gonna slap you like we all know so like but i gave him the benefit of doubt so i actually went on youtube and watched three three tj marconi matches to see if he ever did a dominator never did it not in one of those matches he, he was trying to power bomb the kid and hurt him and like it's just uncalled for Right. And I mean, like you said, that's something that comes up a lot with, I I know, fans and everything like you'll hear, you know, Jim Cornette or somebody tell a story about like, oh, somebody came backstage and I was so pissed off that I slapped him. And they're like, I wish you could do that now. And it's like, yeah, but I mean, nobody at WWE is going to risk the lawsuit of hitting an employee like the world has changed exactly it's have... tw- it's 2018 like you can't do stuff like that anymore right and again like if you want it like yeah you know pop them in the mouth it, you yeah know, if like... they're if they're disrespectful or if they were you know i don't know those kids i have no idea who they are i, I know that they have like some youtube show I, I don't know if they're disrespectful if they're good kids or if, you know i have no i know nothing about them if, if they were out of line and you need to teach them a lesson quote unquote they, like you said punch them in the mouth and it's going to be it's going to be hard for if they tried to sue you to prove that you didn't just accidentally just potato them in the face like exactly but when you throw somebody down as hard as you possibly can on the ground like on the ring like you just got lucky right and like you said there's no video of you doing this move so it's not like you can be like yeah I did a move I do all the time it went wrong yeah like I literally watched three of his matches just to see cuz I wanted cuz like I said I know him I don't hate him I don't hate TJ Marconi like we were friendly when I seen him and I've wrestled him a couple times. Like he, I, you know, he's just like some local guy from New York who doesn't really travel and do that much. But like, but I gave him the benefit of the doubt, you know? And so I watched some of his matches and I never seen him do try to do a dominator. So it's like, okay, man, like, why are you lying? You know, just, just man up and say, like, yeah, that's what I was trying to do. And it messed up. And then I'd be like, okay, that wasn't cool. But at least you said like, yeah, I messed up. Well, yeah. And then if somebody calls you out on it, you don't bring up their family. Like, that, that that's that's, really that's my weird. thing if i told him i said you could have I, I i said you could have said that same little promo you put online which was ridiculous anyways you could have said that exact same thing made fun of ethan page all you wanted but you didn't have to say anything about his wife right once you do and that it, it loses the whole like yeah it, it becomes a nasty actual personal thing and that's that's not good for anybody no not at all all right, a uh, question came in from Brandon Wagman. What was the reason for Ricky Shane Page's AAW departure years back? Oh, boy. Uh, why didn't they bring Ricky back? This was, There was an awesome story that never got finished after he lost the faith mask. I know it's a lost cause, but it's always bothered me. Well, it's always bothered me, too. Uh, so basically, that was the end of 2015, I think. Somewhere. I, I needed to take some time off. Uh, I was just having some personal issues. I needed a few months away from wrestling. Um, I told all the places that I wrestled at that I was going to be taking a few months off. Uh, the only show that I did was a CZW show, and that's because I had been trying to get into CZW for like a year at that point, and they didn't want to book me. And then right when I said I needed to take some time off, they wanted to book me. So I did like one CZW show. Uh I told I told Danny Daniels, a promoter at AAW, like, hey, man, I'm going to take some time off. He said, okay, no worries. We did this little blow-off match with me and Greg Iron. Uh, they took the mask off of me because he, for some reason, would not let me lose that mask for, like, two years um, after I wasn't wearing it anywhere else. Finally let me take the mask off. Uh, I said, I'm going to be back in two months. He said, okay, we'll start up things with Greg then. Uh, he gave me a date. For the the two months after that, I was in England, so I couldn't do it. And then he just never talked to me again. Uh, I tried contacting him a few times, nothing. Um, 
there's this whole giant thing where he uh, mistreated a lot of my friends and Greg Iron actually went off on him online one time about it. Um, he just isn't a very nice person. And, uh, you know, he treated some of the lower level guys at AAW very poorly then. Um, I don't know how things are now. I haven't been there in a long time. But he just, you know, he's very disrespectful to me and a lot of my friends. And uh, so I just never chased it up after that, to be honest, because I didn't really I didn't really want to work there because I, I didn't like the way he treated uh, some people that are close to me. Yeah, so that's I mean, pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, I guess real quick. I mean, there was the whole thing with AAW this past weekend where, uh, you know, Danny Daniels had been pressured about not using Michael Elgin. Mm-hmm. And he knew that it would be an issue. He tried to just slip him onto the mystery show this past weekend. Uh, in his reasoning, it was because he was responsible for bringing Naito over. Whatever. Um, it went over very poorly. You know, and... Uh, Black Label Pro and uh, Freelance were kind of quick to and i don't think unfairly chime in and say you know you have alternatives in the area Mm -hmm. and my immediate thing that i pointed out that i don't think a lot of people know about is danny still does weird stuff to especially mid-card talent where he does this whole them or us thing where yeah you know you're not allowed to take freelance bookings because because apparently Chicago, this huge market that is <laughs> desperate for wrestling, can't support two promotions with completely different tones. Yeah. Freelance is nothing like AAW outside of a couple guys that they use. But, you know, that has always left a bad taste in my mouth because... He's he's always done that. He did that with other promotions before Freelance was even a thing. Right, and uh, Freelance put on a show before Evolve last year when Evolve came to the Chicago area for the first time. Or no, the show was after the Evolve show, but uh, I think it was Suge who put out something about like any uh, building we go into, we make our own, and Danny freaked out about that because they were in the building first, and he just seems like such a weirdly insecure person. And yeah. I don't I, know what it is with him. He's like, he's nice to me when I see him and talk to him and he's never done like out. He's never done like something really shitty personally to me. Just when it comes to like business and stuff, he's just not, I did not, he, our, my dealings with him weren't great. I just don't understand why he does that kind of stuff. It just doesn't make any sense yeah. to me. It's just yeah. so weird to me that Chicago is such... It's a huge city. Mm-hmm. And it's a great wrestling market. And it could support, I mean, it could support 10 promotions running regularly with no yeah. problem. I don't understand why he has a pro- problem with Black Label Pro. They're in Indiana, like an hour away. Like, right. I don't, and, and I don't get that. Know, yeah, I don't know if he actually has a problem with Black Label Pro or if it was just kind of suggested or yeah. or if it ever came up at, or, you know, because I've heard from some people that it's out there and I've heard from others that, you know, it was never said, but people just assumed based on how he handled freelance. and Yeah. And I mean, it is the uh, going to Black Label Pro shows, you see a lot of the same guys you see at AAW shows because, you know, what's an hour, but whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can move on from that. (laughs) Um, Andrew Andrew Jones uh, asked, without shooting yourself in the foot, I'd love to hear your side slash perspective about the Cage of Death situation with Gage. Along the same lines, what is it like to share the ring with Gage? Uh, well, to share the ring with him, he's, uh, he's a presence. There's something, uh, something about that dude that you just... You can't keep your eye off of him. You know, he's very, uh, I don't know, it's hard, to, it's hard to describe. Like, when I wrestled him at um, IW Mid-South, I, I purposely asked to come out first so that I could see his entrance because, like, I just wanted to see it and see how the crowd reacts. And his, people just gravitate towards him. He's a very intimidating person, too. Um, but we had, like, a really good match. Like, we had good chemistry. Uh, as far as the cage of death thing, man, I was bleeding to death. Uh, I got on the microphone, I turned around, Nick Cage is in the ring. And then all hell broke loose. <laughs> uh, 
like DJ comes in, Maven comes in, everybody's pushing each other, trying to fight each other, trying to hold people back. I'm trying to like make sure nobody's actually gonna fight each other. Like Nick Gage is in there, Brett Lauderdale's in there. Like it was just it was crazy. Like it was just like it was just a madhouse. Um I mean it's everybody asks me all the time, like, is it real? Was it real? I was like, Yeah, man, like as far as I know it was real. Like I turn around, he's in the ring. You know what I mean? Like there was talks. I ever since I got into CZW, I've asked to wrestle him. Um, but you know, there was always something going on. You know, and like he, like when I first got there, he was there, but then he ended up going back to jail. So like that happened. And then when he got out, he didn't come back, and like all this stuff. So like, I've always wanted to wrestle him uh, at CZW. I mean, he's the man at CZW. You know, like he he helped build that company. So I, I always thought that that would be like a cool story to do. But I mean, I don't think you know, I don't think that's ever going to happen with all the with all the heat between GCW and CZW, you know, but there's a lot of personal stuff there. There's a lot of business stuff there. Like, I don't know all the ins and outs of everything. I'm just trying to wrestle and have good matches, man. I don't want to get involved in all the, all the BS, you know, but like, I think it would be cool if uh, Nikki came back to CZW, but I get why he doesn't, you know, there's all, there's a lot of history there that, that doesn't involve me. <laughs> yeah. God, he's like you said, there is something about him that, I have been to a ton of shows, but I, for some reason, I had never been to a show that Nick Gage had worked until uh, Black Label Pro earlier this year when him and Jimmy Lloyd wrestled the Faces of Fear. Mm -hmm. And like coming in, it's like, this could be weird. It probably won't be good. Just, you know, realistic expectations based on, you know, maybe yeah, the Barbarian's yeah, age. Yeah, they're 50 years old, yeah. But then Gage comes out, and immediately it's like, oh man, something crazy is happening right now. And yeah. You don't even really know why. And then the match was just ridiculously good. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of it's just because he has like this weird, intense energy where like, it's not like you think anything is real, or it's not like it breaks the suspension of disbelief in a different way. It's just the intensity is at such a level that it's like, I'm just going to go along with this and buy in because it, it, he seems crazy enough. Yeah, that's that's like every one of his matches are like that. Like even as a wrestler, like being in there with him, like I feel the same way. I feel that same weird intensity, that same weird just like scary charisma that right, you're just kind of like, like what is going on? <laughs> Everybody I talk to is like, yeah, but I I always feel completely safe. Oh, yeah, no. He's a true pro, a true professional. He's a very, very good wrestler. Very, very good professional wrestler. There's just something about him. Yeah. Even, honestly, too, like, I think a lot of it has to do with his, his, his prison record, but I remember watching him before then, before he even robbed a bank, and he it was like that before. Like, I remember being on a show with him in, like, IWA Deep South in Alabama at the Carnage Cup, and he came out, and it was the same thing. It was just like, man, what is going on right now? Like, he was wrestling, like, Thumbtack Jack in some cinder block syringes match or something, and, like, there was just this weird feeling because there's just something about him. I don't know what it is. Yeah, uh, just a dude with it, I guess. Yeah. Um. Angelus Lane and Ricky Shane Page both missed Nova Pro Wrestling on Friday because of car issues. The Ugly Ducklings posted that they had driven 33 hours over that weekend just going to events. How how the hell many miles are wrestlers driving per year? Oh man, I don't even I don't even know. Like too many. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've I've been lucky enough to be getting flights recently, but like. So let's say, okay, this weekend, uh, I'm flying to Boston. I'm driving from Boston to Asbury Park, New Jersey. I'm doing CZW on Friday. I'm driving back. From, that's a five-hour drive. I'm driving back to Boston from Asbury Park, then going to Connecticut the next day for Beyond. Driving back to Boston, and then I think there's another – the other show is near Boston. It's like maybe an hour I set of Boston. I'm driving there doing that show on Sunday and then driving back to Boston then flying back home. That's that, and honestly, that's not that bad. Like five hours is nothing. Right. Um, that when I my car, so I'll tell you about my car. Uh, start my car up. This was like Wednesday morning. No, Thursday morning. 
just starts pouring gas out, like just leaking on my driveway, just pouring gas. And I'm like, okay, well, that's not good. Uh, I'm supposed to be driving to Virginia, which is a six hour drive from, from uh, Ohio by myself on Friday and driving six hours back. And I'm like, okay, I need to figure this out. I couldn't ride with anyone else. I was going to ride with Dominic Arini, but he had evolved the rest of the weekend and I couldn't, I needed to be back in Cleveland on Sunday to be able to go to alpha one, uh, for their show. So I had to like try to figure out what was wrong with my car. Took it. I took it to this one mechanic. They were like, Oh, it's going to cost a thousand dollars to fix. And I'm like, what? I'm like, no. Then I found like some dude who works on van, like works on these, uh, my, where I work at my real job. He works on our vans that we use. He's like, Oh, I could do it but it's going to be like 600. I'm like, all right, well that's better than a thousand. Right. So I had, and I was like, can you get this done before tomorrow? Like I, this was on Thursday. I was like, I need to leave at like noon tomorrow to be able to make this show. He's like, I don't know. We'll see. So he didn't know. And so I just, as a preemptive thing, I was like, all right, I told Nova pro, I was like, listen, I'm going to cancel. Cause I didn't want you guys to be able to get a replacement in enough time. I don't know if I'm going to make it to the show in enough time. He didn't get my car fixed in enough time, obviously. So right. I wouldn't have been able to make it anyways. But yeah, so then I would have had to drive six hours there, six hours back. And then sad on Sunday, I drove five hours to Hamilton and five hours back. Uh, so, I mean, that's like a typical weekend for pro, you know, for pro wrestlers. I'm lucky that in Ohio, like a lot of things are, I'm pretty central to a lot of different places. Like it's five hours to Chicago. It's five hours up to Toronto. It's about a seven hour drive to like, uh, you know, Philadelphia and New Jersey area. Like St. Louis is like an eight hour drive. I'm like pretty much in the middle, but some of those guys that live like, you know, down South and stuff, they're driving 18 hours, some places, right. You know, one way. So it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy to be an independent wrestler nowadays. Yeah. I mean, there's the opportunities have gotten, you know, there's so many now, but that means so many more places to go. Yes. Uh, and you have to be willing to put in the miles. Right. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Another question here. Has there been a match pitched to you that you turned down, I guess, theoretically, because it's too out of your comfort zone? No. Uh, I've pitched matches to other people and they've turned them down. Okay, example. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, I wanted to, you know, the I think they call it the uh, ring of sacrifice where they take the, the, the canvas and the padding off, and yeah. it's just the bare boards. So yeah. I wanted to do bare boards, but then screw gusset plates to the boards. Oh. Uh, and uh, I don't remember who was going to be in that with me, but they, they said no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, nothing has come up yet, to be honest. Uh, I don't like barbed wire, but I'll do it. I just don't know. I don't know why barbed wire weirds me out, but it just gets stuck to you and you're rolling around in it and you're just stuck there. You can't do anything. It sucks. But uh, nothing, nothing's come up yet that I've been like, nah, I don't want to do that. All right. Uh, keeping on the uh, the Ethan Page theme, uh, what is okay. what, what is your go-to Taco Bell order? Ooh, go to okay. I get the uh, cheesy gordita crunch combo uh, with the two Doritos Locos tacos. All right. Let's see, I switch it up though. I have them put a Doritos Locos taco in my cheesy gordita crunch because right. I'm next level fat on that. <laughs> uh, and I'm always good for a couple cheese roll ups. I know that's like real elementary, like, but I I don't know why it's just cheese in a tortilla, man. Like I'm down. Yeah, that's you a, know that's a solid go to, and I'll. It's like one of my daughter's favorite things. I have a four-year-old little girl who mm -hmm. that's her. So I'll like, you know, it gives me an excuse to order two because I should probably just have one too. I don't know why. <laughs> if you're going to have one, then I have to eat yeah. one too for, for safety. Exactly. Just so everybody feels included. Right. Yeah. We don't want to leave anybody out. That's nope. not what we do here. Um, and then, yeah, I think we hit all the questions. I think we've gotten through everything. Uh, nice. We're going to come in a little short on this episode, which is totally fine, but I want to make sure that I give you a chance to, you know, pitch your merch, pitch your Twitter, all that good stuff. 
Uh, everything you can find me everywhere at Ricky Shane Page. Ricky with an E. R I C K E Y. I know that's very hard for people to figure out sometimes. Um, blame my father. He spelled it that way. Uh, at Ricky Shane Page on everything Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, uh, Pro Wrestling Tees slash Ricky Shane Page, and Ricky Shane Page dot com as well. Um, you, that's it, man. I'm usually pretty good about uh, answering anybody that uh, messages me, unless it gets like hidden in my rec- requests or others folder on Facebook. I'm sorry, but uh, I usually am pretty good about hitting people up, and uh, I'm pretty uh, interactive on at least on Twitter. All right, excellent. Uh, thank you so much again for filling in for Ethan this week. Uh, you know, love to have you back another time in the future. So, uh, yeah, thanks, man. No problem, man. All right, take it easy. And everybody, uh, I guess I should get my stuff in at Brent Brookhouse on Twitter. Uh, thank you to the good people at Cage Side Seats for hosting our show, as always. And uh, we will be back next week. Talk to you then. Whoa, whoa.